Hello, welcome to this week's Bible study on Daniel chapter 2. Daniel and his friends were living in exile. They had been uprooted from their homes and taken to work for the king who had destroyed their lives. They showed great character in their new life and God was with them, helping them. Many of their compatriots hoped for a quick rescue, but God had already warned them that the exile would last 70 years. The stories and visions of Daniel remind us of some words that Jesus spoke. These things must take place, but the end is not yet. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. What Jesus is saying is he is warning his followers that they will have many difficult times, that the world will go through times of great trouble, and that this doesn't mean we have reached the last days of the world, and that Jesus is coming back next week. When we studied Revelation, we found that Jesus gives us the same warning that there will be times of hardship and tragedy. So we're not totally surprised when life is tough or by a coronavirus pandemic. And we needn't have an unrealistic expectation that God will always step in and airlift us out of trouble. I do believe that he often does protect us from suffering, but there are times when he walks with us through a difficult time. In Revelation, we also visited the control room and saw the view from there. Jesus is very much in charge, watching over everything, caring for his people, and his plans are being worked out for good. He is never caught out by logistics problems or trying to solve a problem he hadn't thought of. Everything is in hand. So, back to Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar is the man with the power, but he is frightened by his dream. He doesn't know whether he has had a dream or a nightmare. We've just been watching the six wives of Henry VIII. Those kings were scary. Was Nebuchadnezzar being totally unreasonable or was he checking out whether the wise men were genuine? The wise men of the day were helpless. They needed to know what the dream was so they could look up its meaning in their guides to dreams. In verse 11 they said, The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream and they do not live here among people. There was no one who could answer the king. Only God would be able to describe and interpret the dream. It really does matter who or what we put our trust in. We do need someone who is able to rescue us from sin and death and to help us in our lives. Daniel and his friends were at risk here, but Daniel responds wisely. He keeps calm and communicates well. Daniel didn't know he would be able to tell the king his dream. In chapter one, it tells us that Daniel had a gift for interpreting dreams. But just because he has a gift doesn't mean he can do this without God's help. Daniel knows he is inadequate for this task. He needs God and he asks his friends to pray. He doesn't take the credit. Arioch did, but Daniel didn't. So often we feel the pressure to show ourselves in a good light. And popular advice says to us, you are enough. But I find it such a relief to not need to be enough. It would be a hopeless task for the rest of my life to try and convince myself that I am enough, that I'm adequate. So I'm not wasting my time on that. But God is enough and we're together. In verse 30, Daniel says to the king, and it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to understand what was in your heart. Daniel knew 
that he wasn't the important person here. God wanted to speak to Nebuchadnezzar. When God gives us gifts to encourage and help each other, we're not the important ones. It's not about me. Daniel relied on God and then he praised him. Psalm 103 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Psalm 105 says, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Spurgeon, the great preacher, was explaining the good news about Jesus to a woman when she burst out with, Oh, Mr Spurgeon, if the Lord saves me, he shall never hear the end of it. Let's be inspired by Rend Collective who sing, Oh, for a countless choir in my lungs to sing your praises with a thousand tongues. The purpose in my days is ever to proclaim how great you are and how great must be your song. Nebuchadnezzar's dream shows that the power of the kings is limited and fragile and God's power will last forever and fill the earth. At this point, Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges that God is great and can reveal mysteries, but it doesn't prick his bubble of self-importance. The dream showed four kingdoms, possibly representing Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome, but none of them lasted. Jesus came to earth, lived and died for us, rose from the dead to give us new life and calls us to follow him. He is our king. And around the world, millions and millions of people follow him. Jesus said his kingdom was like a tiny mustard seed, which would grow into a huge tree. In Britain, we might feel like a small minority, but in many other places, the church is growing rapidly, even though it's been persecuted, places like China and Iran. And the church is still growing. Verse 44 says, During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. In verse 28 it says, what well, Daniel said, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. Let me share a thought from a book I'm reading. Christians know that there is a God who knows and is in charge of the events of history. This is not a brilliant insight of theirs. They only know because God has told them. It gives us hope and courage to know where history is heading, that Jesus is building his kingdom and that God has a purpose that we are part of. God's plans are indestructible and they are centred on Jesus. We too need to remember this dream. Thank you for listening. Bye.